Hey guys, Matt Dancho here, and today what we're going to go through is how to integrate AI and ML for a customer churn problem. And this is where I think we can start to use generative AI and machine learning together. So my goal for you today in the next five to 10 minutes, we're going to go through some code. We're going to check out how to solve a customer churn problem, and I'm going to share how to use LLMs in that process to help you start to integrate LLMs into your ML workflows. All right, so let's get started. Um, the first thing we're going to do here, uh, so let's check out the code. Um, I'm going to load in some libraries. Some of these may be familiar to you, some may not be. So I'm going to hit shift and enter here. And what this is going to do is it's going to uh, uh, import all of the libraries that we need to complete this lesson. So you can see here we've got OpenAI. So that's going to be the AI, the generative AI that we're going to use uh, to help us analyze the customer churn model that we developed today. Um, and not just analyze it, but create features for it. So we're actually going to use these LLMs to, to generate summaries of customer tickets. I'll show you how to do that. And we're going to use some text embeddings here in a, in a minute. Um, for the machine learning component, we're going to be using a lot of scikit-learn and XGBoost, my favorite machine learning model. And then these are, if you're familiar with data science, uh, pandas, numpy, these are some common libraries. And, the, and we've got some other libraries here we're going to um, throw into the mix as well. Okay, so to get moving forward, setting up this thing, what we're going to do is we're going to point to this folder here. That's for the second tip here. It's the customer churn AI. That's the directory that I'm pointing to. So that's my path root. And I'm going to set up some models. These are open AI models. If you don't want to use open AI, you can also use other models as well, like Olama or Langchain models as well. But I have this tutorial set up just for open AI, just to give you an example. We're going to use GPT-40 mini for the LLMs. And for the embedding model, what we're going to use is this text embedding add a model that open AI offers. Okay. So to set up your open AI, you're going to need to set up an API key and you'll go onto their website and get your API key there. Will They will charge you to run these models, but good news is, is that if we're using GPT-40 mini, this tutorial, I think may charge me like a penny. It's really cost effective. Okay, so I'm going to run this next section here that's going to set up my path root and my LLMs, and then we're going to load in the data set as well. So once I pull this data set in, let's, ch let's give that a look. So I'm going to move my head out of the way, and this is what that data set looks like. It's a customer churn data set uh, where we've got the customer ID, the age of the customer, how long they've been with the company in, ter in terms of months, their spending rate, and their plan type, if it's a monthly or an annual plan whether or not they've churned. And we also, you can see here that these are customers that have all reached out to the company and they've had various issues or comments or feedback and we have those stored as tickets. So these are the ticket notes. And this is where we're going to actually use AI, LLMs, to, to help us analyze this information. Because this is traditionally very difficult to, to work with unstructured text data, just like paragraphs of text. So we're going to check out how. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to move on to generating summaries with LLMs. And this will take a few minutes. So basically, we're going to come up with a function here, this, this function definition called summarize ticket. It's going to take one of these um, ticket text. Whoops, I reject that. There we go. It's going to take one of these pieces of text here. So this is like a paragraph of text in the ticket notes that a customer has, has given us that feedback. It's going to take, for each one of these, it's going to take that text. And what we're going to do is we're going to say summarize the following customer ticket. And what's going to do, it's going to take that big long paragraph or several paragraphs of text and condense it down into just like the essential meaning and, and the essential um, summary of that customer ticket. Uh, and then this is where it actually, the LLM model will get called. So for every single row, we're going to call the L LLM model and it's going to run this summarization process on it. Um, so the LLM model, that's our, our GPT-40 mini, which we set up previously. And we're going to use this client chat completions. And this is going to link up to our OpenAI account. Okay. Uh, other than that, that's that's pretty much it. It's going to return the response and it's going to you know condense that down. So how do we do this? 
Well, very simple way is to use the apply function. There's other ways we can do it. We can do like asynchronous requests, but to simplify things, we'll just do this. It will take a minute or a few minutes to run. You will incur some charges if you're using OpenAI. Again, I ran this and it was about a cent, so it's, it wasn't very expensive. So we'll let this run and, and I'll come back to it. Okay, it took about 54 seconds and it looks like it's wrapped up. So let's see what happened. What we did was we added a ticket summary column and that's going to be the summarization. So let's check out our data frame again. I'm just going to take this DF and shift and enter. And now you can see we've got a new column called ticket summary where that the ticket notes have been summarized. Okay, so this will be a lot easier for next step. So we need to convert this information now that it's been condensed into what are called text embeddings. So that's what we're going to check out next. So if you see this here, I've actually saved this previously for you in case you don't want to run that and incur the costs. I do have them stored in here. So this is going to be the, the customer churn summary.csv. That is with the, the new column added. Okay. So you can just run this line here and it'll pull that right in. All right. So the next thing, text embeddings. So what text embeddings are is that's where we take this summarized text and we're going to convert that into a bunch of features. Okay, this is going to be uh, basically like a, a sequence that we can actually use to identify numerically how similar different text is to each other and so on. And we're going to actually going to create features from those text embeddings. So I'm going to show you first how to create the embeddings and then I'll show, share how to convert those into features. All right. So let's run this function. So what this is going to do is we're going to, and actually I'll, I'll, I'll run it in it uh, because it will take a little bit of time. And, it, and also just a heads up, it, you will incur charges on your OpenAI account. I've already saved the data if you don't want to incur those charges. Okay. So What's happening inside this function? We're taking a, a piece of text. So each one of these summarizations are gonna go into here. And what we're gonna do is use this client embeddings create, and it's gonna use an embedding model, which is our text embedding at 002. And then what it's gonna do is it's gonna produce that embedding, and we're gonna store that in a new column called summary underscore embedding. All right, so it's already done. This one actually goes a lot faster, 23 seconds. And if we shift and enter here, we can now see um, what has been produced. So this is the summary embeddings. And what this is going to be is a list, of, a big list of numeric data. And what we need to do then is we need to extract out that and convert that into features. And then we can use it in a machine learning model. All right. So if that doesn't make sense. We'll just keep going with me because you'll see how we prepare this and then how we do how we use it in machine learning. Okay, so next thing we're going to do, we're going to prepare the features. So I'm going to create this column called plan type encoded, and we're going to take the plan type. So we're going to be basically taking some of the stuff. This is plan type monthly and annual. We're going to encode those. We're going to prepare this for this data set for machine learning. So uh, we're going to first take our DF, create plan type encoded. That creates a new column of zeros and ones. So you can see plan type encoded ones and zeros now. That's because machine learning models can't really deal with text. So we got to convert those to numeric features. Okay. All right. So next thing, we're going to take our summary embedded and we're going to apply this ast.literal eval. And that's needed to, to, to basically store those in the correct data format for analysis. So we're going to shift and enter. Okay. It looks like I'm getting a malformed string here. Let's see. Here, I'm going to pull in the previous data frame that I stored because this was working here just a minute ago. Let's run that and then let's run this. Okay. All right. It's, it's working with the, the previously stored data set. Okay. So next thing what we want to do is we want to take our, this summary embedding and we're going to start to um, manipulate it. So we're going to take this embeddings DF and we're going to make a bunch of zero columns of zeros and ones. And you can see now there's like 15, 1,536 columns. That's just crazy. All right. Um, so what we're going to do then is we're going to figure out which features we want to use together. So we want to use age, tenure, spend rate, plan type encoded. So that's some of these features up here, some of these ones here. And then we're going to mix that in with our embeddings. Okay. So XDF is going to be our training data frame. And we're going to 
grab this. So we're going to have plan type encoded. We're going to concatenate that with the embedding ZF, age 10 year spend rate, plan type encoded and embedding ZF. Okay. So we run this, run this, and then we're going to get our X and our Y. So XDF will have everything but churn in here. Yeah, so it'll have all the encoded features plus all of these features. And then Y is going to be our targets. So this is going to be whether or not those that customer had churned or not. Okay. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to train an XG boost model. This is going to be where we take, where we're going to make a classification model. And we're going to set up some parameters and then we're going to train it on a training data set and a testing data set, which is what we create right here. So we're going to split those up into training and test sets. And then we're going to create a model here where we fit those on the training sets and we're going to predict them on the test sets. So uh, Y pred is going to be the predictions, zeros and ones, whether or not they've turned or not. And then prediction proba is our probability. So uh, there's a 95% probability that this first one churned. Uh, there's only a 2% probability that the second one churned. Okay. So we can create a classification report. That's what this does. And we can see that actually this turns out that this model is, is very, very good on this data set. And we're going to see why here in a second, getting a perfect score, which doesn't really happen a lot in the real world. But in this case, we are getting a, a perfect score. And I'm going to show you why here in a second. So, so there, there we go. Now, we want to understand, all right, what, how are we getting such a good you know, perfect accuracy score. So this is where it comes into the interpretability part of machine learning. We've got, you know, all of these text features, we've got these other features. What is, which features are, are creating this, this perfect model? Um, so we're going to take, we're going to grab from our model, the, the booster. So that's this thing right here. And then what we can do is we can plot the feature importance. So that's what we're doing here. And we can see that this feature 422 is like, super important, but there aren't any other features that are really that important. And we can also see that from this, if you grab out the feature importances. And then if I run this code here, it'll show us which features, um, whoops, make sure I get the whole code. There we go. So that feature 422 is like pretty much 100% importance and everything else is, is virtually fails in comparison. So we need to figure out what is driving that feature 422? So that's one of our text embedding features. If I grab that out of the X data frame, we can see it's just a bunch of numbers. So that doesn't really mean much. So we have to get, we have to put our data science hats on a little bit and we got to snoop in and figure out, okay, uh, what, you know, when I, when I sort this, this feature, how, how does our churn, you know, change or like what is high and low and, and how does that relate in our features? So here's how we're going to do that. We're going to take our top feature importance. So I'm going to take a, a make a copy of, of my data frame, um, which is our churn data. Okay. So this is uh, our churn data that I made a copy from. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in that feature into this data frame. So now if I look at this again, we should have that in here and we do now here it's, it's over here. Let me scroll over a little bit. So this is that feature that 422 is now in that data frame. And what uh, we're going to do here is we're going to sort those values by that 422 feature. Okay. When we do that, what I can see here is that churn is one, 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 one for all of the, these, when I sort the, the values. Okay. So I'm going to make this a little bigger for us here. I'll minimize that. And there we go. And you can see, so we're sorting by this column here. And what I can see here is that that 422 feature, when I look at these ticket summaries, and you can um, expand these, you can actually drill into each one of these, but um, it, it actually shows, uh, shows up quite immediately. The customer is frustrated due to frequent something. The customer is frustrated with frequent app crashes, okay? The customer is frustrated due to delays. So frustrated, is frustrated or dissatisfied, dissatisfied. So this goes to show you that when your customers are reaching out to that company saying that they're really upset about something, I'm frustrated, I'm, I'm using words like I'm dissatisfied. Those are the people that you really actually do need to focus on because they're getting ready to churn. They're getting ready to leave that company. And if they're using language like that, we can see the opposite. In fact, if I do sending is true. So let's see this feature here. 
um, these are all, you can see churn is, is very low in, in this group here because that 422 feature. And we can say the customer inquired about gift vouchers. Okay, so they're coming to you asking about gift vouchers. No big deal. I mean, those people are just you know wanting to buy more of the products. A customer inquired about loyalty points. The customer inquired about gift options. The customer is generally satisfied. See, all of these features at four, that 422, we can see that these people are very low likely of uh, churning based on you know what that ticket summary is, is saying. So there we go. Uh, I'm going to switch this back to false, but uh, that's that's generally um, how we can use these LLMs to really start to integrate those into various uh, problems, business problems that we can um, that we're using mach uh, machine learning to analyze. So text embeddings can be an absolutely huge, huge performance boost in your modeling approaches. And again, you saw here today exactly how to do that. So we, we did first the, um, uh, we first got the LLM to summarize the text for those tickets. And then we uh, converted those into numeric values using text embeddings, very cool technique. All right, so um, there you go, there you have it. Uh, this is AI tip number two, AI ML for customer churn. If you liked it, then give me a thumbs up. And if you want more stuff or wanna let me know what to do next, put that in the comments in the, of this video. Awesome, have a great day and I hope you guys learned a lot.